Welcome to the Tile Roofing Industry Alliance presentation of high wind examples at 150 miles per hour. We'll be using the new rules of ASCE 7-16 and the new 6th edition Florida High Wind Installation Manual to show you these six examples. Hi, I'm Paul Lexak, Technical Trainer, Boral Roofing, and I'll be using these tables with you to show you six examples of roofs at 150 miles per hour. Here is the ASCE 716 wind map for exposure C found in the FRSA TRI 6th edition on page 32. You can see the 150 mile an hour wind zone includes a little slice of the panhandle and cuts through central Florida. The big difference between the old manual and the new 6th edition FRSA TRI high wind manual is different types of roofs or roof style. The old manual had one style roof. The new manual separates the tables into hip roofs and gable roofs. Also, another difference with the ASCE 7-16 are the individual roof zones located on a hip and gable roof. In ASCE 7-10, there were three zones for all roofs. In the ASCE 7-16, the new sixth edition of the manual, there are six different zones for gable roofs and four different zones for hip roofs. Let's look at the roof zones for ASCE 7-16. In figure one, hip roof, you'll see four different zones. Zone one, zone two E, zone two R, and zone three. In figure two, gable roofs, you'll see six distinct zones. In the manual, they have divided these zones into either a low pressure zone or a high pressure zone. In a hip roof, figure one, the low pressure zones are everything on that roof other than zone three. The high pressure zone is zone three, just the corners. On a gable roof, the high pressure zones are 3E and 3R, and the low pressure zones are 1, 2E, 2R, and 2N. When looking at the whole roof and the roof zones, there's two options. The first option is the single fastening method, which is you use one fastening method for the entire roof that meets or exceeds both the high and low pressure zones. The other method is the two fastening method, where you use one method of fastening for the high pressure zones while using another method of fastening for the low pressure zones. To do this, you need to calculate the size of the high pressure zone, which is the in the formula for A. Uh, that is covered in another class, but it has to be calculated for you to use the two fastening method. Using the Florida 6th edition high wind manual, let's look at some tables and how they're going to be used to configure our six examples in this wind zone. Table three, mechanical fastening methods, is found on page 31 of the sixth edition. It lists the various attachment uh, methods and also the mechanical fastening resistant values in foot pounds over plywood for the low, medium, and high profile tile. It's actually the aerodynamic uplift moments recorded in testing, and you'll need these values to meet or exceed your design uplift moments which are found on other tables. Before proceeding, I'd like to spend a minute on foam attachment methods. The foam attachment methods may be an alternative to mechanical fastening. These listings are not in the FRSA TRI 6th edition, but rather in the foam manufacturer's product approval. You'll have to look at their patty sizes, their placement, and their uplift resistance and 
compare those to your design pressures using that full manufacturer's product approval. There are now six wind uplift tables, three for hip roofs, three for gable roofs. The hip roofs and the gable roofs are broken down by exposure. So exposure B, hip roof, is in table 2HB. Exposure B, gable roof, is in table 2GB. Likewise, in exposure C, in a hip roof, you have two, table 2HC. In gable roof, you have two table 2GC. And it follows in exposure D, table 2HD in table two GD. Let's look at the components to determine our fastening. Is it a hip roof, a gable roof, or a combination of hip and gables? What exposure are you in, B, C, or D? Exposure definitions can be found on page 50 of the FRSA TRI guide. What's your roof pitch? There are now three distinctive roof pitch groups. We'll go over those in another slide. What wind speed are you in? Always check with your local building department to ensure that your wind speed is their wind speed. What are your low pressure zones and what are your high pressure zones? What's your mean roof height? Anywhere from zero to 15 feet up to and including 60 foot. Above 60 foot, you'll have to do some engineering. What's your tile profile? Are you a flat tile, low, uh, low profile, a medium profile, or a high profile? What is your manufacturer's tile ratio? That's based on the size of the tile. And lastly, how are you going to fasten it? Nails, screws, or are you going to use foam? Here are what the table twos look like. Here's two examples. On page 26, you'll find table 2HC, which is for roofs that are hip roofs in exposure C. Table 2GC is the gable roofs in exposure C. We will now look at six examples of roofs at 150 miles per hour. For our examples, we'll make sure they're all exposure C, and we're going to use the same tile ratio, which is a high ratio of 1.10. We're going to do three hip roofs at the three different slopes on the tables, and those are less than 4.5 and 12, 4.5 and 12 to less than 612, and then 612 to 1212. And we'll also do the same slopes for the three gable roofs we're looking at. There are three steps to determine fastening. Step one is to find your uplift moment table. And you'll need to know if it's a hip or gable roof and you'll also need the exposure B, C, or D. Second step is to find the design uplift moment both for the low pressure zone and the high pressure zone. For that, you'll need wind speed, slope, mean roof height, and a new thing called tile ratio, which is an adjustment to the table to the actual dimensions of the tile you are using on your specific project. In essence, it's a correct correction factor. Step three is find your fastening in table three. You'll need to find a resistance greater than or equal to the design uplift moment you found in step two. We can start with example one, 150 miles per hour, a hip roof exposure C, less than four and a half on 12 slope, mean roof height to 30 foot, all profiles and a tile ratio of 1.10. Step one is to find your table. The table that we're going to use is table 2HC. The HC stands for a hip and exposure C. And that can be found on page 26. We expand our table a little bit and go to step two, finding our uplift moment, part one. We're at 150 miles an hour. We're less than four and a half, 12 slope, 
30 foot mean roof height. We look over and the LPZ and the HPZ are the same at 29.2. That is our required aerodynamic uplift moment from the table. We then go to step two, part two, which is factoring in our tile ratio. So we take our LPZ and HPZ 29.2 uplift moment, factor in the tile ratio of 1.10, which represents a large tile, and we get a new uplift moment of 32.1. We then go to step three, finding our fastening, where we take our uplift moment of 32.1 and go to table three and see for a flat or low profile tile, those fastening methods exceed 32.1. On our double roll medium profile tile, those fastening patterns exceed 32.1. And on our higher profile tiles, those fastening methods exceed 32.1. So those are our three steps. For example two, we stay at a hip roof exposure C, but we go to a four and a half 12 to less than 612 slope roof. And step one was finding our table 28C, step two, Part one was finding our uplift moment on that table. Step two, part two is factoring in our tile ratio. Uh, they're both the same, 26.7. We go to table three and we see for the low profile tiles, those faceting methods are greater than 26.7. Medium profile, those faceting patterns and the high profile, those faceting patterns. For example three, we'll move up to a six on 12 to a 12 over 12 roof slope. Mean roof height to 30 foot and we'll look at flat tiles. If you look at our two charts, you'll see that in this case, the LPZ, the low pressure zone, has a different value than the high pressure zone. When you look at the low pressure zone, all right, you compare that to table three and you can see that those uplift moments or those methods of fastening will meet that low pressure zone up, uplift. When you look at the high pressure zone, only on direct deck, there is a value greater than that 41 and that's two screws. On the batten system, there are no mechanically fastened methods that will meet that uplift moment on the HPZ. So in the HPZ, Low profile tile, you'll have to use foam. For example four, let's switch over the gable roofs, exposure C, less than four and a half, 12 slope, mean roof height to 30 foot. We switch tables now, we've gone to table two GC, and we get our uh, HP, LPZ and HPZ uplift moments. We factor in our tile ratio, and then we first look at the LPZs. On table three, for low profile or flat tile, those methods can be used in the LPZ. For the medium profile tile, these methods of attachment will work. In the high profile tile, those methods will work. We then look at our HPZ, the corners. In, in the gables case, they're the bottom of the gable end and the top of the gable end. And you'll see those circled in blue are the fastening methods that work in the HPZ. For example, five, we'll stay on gable roofs, but we'll go to a four and a half on 12 to less than 612 slope, mean roof height for 30 foot. We look at our table 2GC and get our LPZ and HPZ uplift moments. We'll factor in the tile ratio. We'll then look at the LPZ and see on table three that those faceting methods will work in the LPZ. When we look at the HPZ, we'll find that those faceting methods will work in the HPZ. 
In example six, 150 mile an hour gable roof exposure C on a steep 612 to 1212 roof slope. We'll stay at 30 foot mean roof height and we'll look at all the tiles. We can go to table 2GC and get our uplift moment. Factor in the tile ratio. Look at the LPZs over to table three and you'll see that those mechanically fastening methods will work in the LPZ. When we go to the HPZ, table three, we'll see that the blue circles represent the fastening methods you can use for the HPZ. Thank you. For further information, go to www.tileroofing.org.